And I think it's important for folks to know that every kid entering foster care has some level of trauma. Seeing kids actually coming into our house and just having that moment of sort of shell shock in some cases, not even knowing where to put their shoes, what to do with their backpack, and really seeing the sadness in a child. And it always has stricken me as incredibly hard, what we expect from kids in a way that we ourselves wouldn't be able to manage. There's a lot that has happened in their lives. For a lot of our kiddos in their very short lives have had a ton of transition, a lot of trauma, a lot of hurt and instability, and that shows up really big at times in little people. That kind of separation and dismantling of a family is just very, very difficult. But there are a lot of ways to kind of help families be supported and to heal from those experiences. The biggest thing that connects all of our programs is really a focus on defining family in the broadest sense possible as all of the adults that love and care for a child rallying around supporting that child through one of that child's most difficult times in life. We at Amara recognize that there will always be a need for foster care. One of the things that Amara does really, really well is ensuring that we are supporting foster parents in understanding the needs of kids when they come into their home, understanding how to support that kiddo in stabilizing in that home so that that child can stay just in one place until they can go back home. The work that we do at Amara with parents and caregivers um, has a lot of impact to the child's stability and safety in their home, as well as how these families can be supported so that when they're less stressed, they can really focus on what are the needs of their children. There's a lot of work in becoming a foster family, but there's also a lot of joy too, because they know that they are helping out these children and these families reunite when they are able to. And they're just another part of this huge interwoven fabric. One of the big changes that Washington State is making is moving towards placing children in kinship families as frequently as possible. And kinship families are uh, family taking care of their own family. If we have to remove a kid, to me the best step is kinship care because they're staying within their families, their communities, their friends, their church, et cetera. They know where they're going. Grandma's house is a safe house. They have been there before. They know the dogs. They know grandma's cooking. A lot of that anxiety stuff is taken away because they are with familiar faces. A lot of the services currently for caregivers really are focused on foster parents, and foster parents have a very different experience than kinship caregivers. So we really need programs who help kinship caregivers get what they have missed through that kind of training onboarding process that foster parents get. And so that's what we're trying to do with our programs. My dream is that we adequately support kinship families so that they can thrive, be amazing caregivers to these kids, and then let these kids do amazing things. The child welfare system has started thinking about what can we do to prevent the trauma of family separation in the first place. Our programs have really sought to be at the forefront of that. We have a couple of programs that support parents before they hit a crisis or who have already been identified by the child welfare system as a household that may need resources. And we do so by really partnering parents who have successfully navigated the system, who have gotten their kids back to help other parents do the same. So back in 2019, my daughter was born. I got paperwork in the mail saying, oh, uh, you got a court date. You're being charged with uh, child abandonment and neglect. She went home with the foster parents, and that's when my life fell apart. But then my life started again. My child wasn't born until I was 40, and I didn't get clean until I was 43. When my daughter was removed from my care, one of the things that happened was I didn't get on board. I was angry. In July of 2008, I went to my social worker and I told my social worker, I said, look, I don't want to lose my child. I didn't have the mentorship while I was going through the case. And so I don't ever want another parent to go through um, not having some type of support in their corner. I've had a wraparound team that uh, helped me get through everything. So I get to share you know, my life experience and help another family. It's the uh, involvement with families 
mentoring them, I'm learning how to help change somebody else's life. I wouldn't have any of this had not somebody believed in me. So I think that that is what we have to offer parents. I think Amara has done a really beautiful job of pivoting to really meet the needs and the shift the child welfare system has made. I think the most important part of being a leader in child welfare is that you actually want to seize existing. That you don't drive programming or innovation or policy with the mindset that you would like to continue being an entity in the system. That you can like really see a world where there is no need for child welfare to exist. We are moving in a way that I think has to help us reframe what is child welfare, what is its purpose, and why do we do what we do? And I think that is a really important question to constantly be asking and really focusing on what is the goal, what is the mission, and that is to have strong families and strong communities. We have been in the policy forefront of this work. We have been in the practice forefront of this work. And continuing to innovate in that space is huge. Parent allies are being called to the table to uh, do things along with judges, lawyers, social workers. We're sitting at the table today. And that is the best thing that could have ever happened. But I like that we're not afraid to dream big, challenge ourselves, and really pivot to meet the needs of our changing society. Amara has been here for 102 years, and I think for each of those 102 years, we have been uh, daring and bold and really thinking about what is best for kids and what is best for families. When I think about Amara, um, the word that comes to mind is amor in Spanish, which means love. Amara to me means love, a uh, love of children, love of families, love of community, and also think about the love like everyone belongs.